Welcome back to The Beat on Bridges TV. What is your core competency? Songwriting in English. Okay. I, you know, English is my mother tongue. Yeah. I like writing poetry, mm -hmm. um, and, and the poetry just goes hand in hand with the songwriting. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's all in English. Now, in terms of the, the musical style, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of different things that I like to add in there. But essentially, it's English music. Now, styles, what kind of music do you play? Because people want to know what kind of music you play. Like, we're going to, you know, try to explain, because I'm trying to get a clarification on where you would define yourself as being in the musical genre world, whatever. So, where would you put yourself? I hate that question. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just say I give up and I say rock, it's rock music. But really, it's not. Um, I started off with... Uh, you know, I told you we had guitars and like, drums, and it was all the tools that were provided to us were all these, you know, these these Western instruments: guitars, drums. There's a bass guitar, and then there's you know the the saxophone, the clarinet, the trombone. We used to just kind of play and just just have a good time with all mm -hmm. those sort of things. But all the training that we got, and this was a strange thing. My parents were a bit wacky, and I was and didn't understand why they did this. Mm -hmm. It was all classical and Indian. So all the training that we got was all these, you know, old guys with harmoniums and tablas coming by, and we were singing with them, you know, the ragas, mm -hmm. ragas. It's, a, it's a type of song, an East, East or South Asian song. So that was all the training that we got, and the tools that we used to go back to after the training was like a guitar with distortion, it's loud, obnoxious, it's drunken. So it just kind of fused into this this sort of ethnic rock sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would uh, describe as ethnic rock. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I want to bring that in more right now as in, in trying to establish myself. So I'm, I'm doing more of the mainstream rock. So just kind of ease myself on the whole ethnic thing. But I, you know, I, I wouldn't think about it for a second if I had to put in a tabla or I had to put in a sitar in there. And it's kind of funny because you, you'd go to my you know performances, my brothers and I, and everyone's like, you see a big drum kit and you see guys with guitars and you, you expect this loud sound to come out and then, you know, I'm standing there and I'm going, dang, 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 dang. <laughs> everyone's just like, what? <laughs> but I think they good appreciate it. Yeah. So, so that's what I would say, ethnic rock, if that answers your question. Okay. So do you guys use um, South Asian instruments at all or is it all like Western? Well, well yes, yes. We use South Asian instruments and we use the tabla a lot. I love the tabla. It's a mm -hmm. beautiful instrument. Um, try to use, you know, flutes and, you know, the shanai, I mean, you try to use the, the, the stars and, you know, those drones in the back. And not only that, that's, those instruments are fine, but it's almost like what I want to bring in is introducing different scales and different types of um, vocal trends and patterns that you could add into rock music that mm -hmm. comes from an Indian or a Pakistani background and infuse it into the rock. Mm -hmm. Not so much so that everyone's like, whoa, what's yeah. this? But just, but just kind of introduce it slowly because I, I want to you know I think it's a beautiful um, art and it's totally different. I mean the styles of of South Asia. Bringing it here, I think if I do it slowly, then it'll actually make a a, mm -hmm. a, a, a change in people. If I do it all of a sudden, then I'll just be you know, dubbed an Indian musician, really. Mm -hmm. So that that's what the plan is. One thing I want to get back to is you said that a lot of your musical like inspiration or whatever started to build your in real interest in music started in Saudi Arabia while you lived there. Yes. Was it was there Arabic music that w influenced you or was there any sort of Saudi like culture that affected that is what I'm trying to get at. Yes. Yes, there was a lot of Saudi culture. What there kind there, there, was, there was a, you know, when you live in that atmosphere, there's all all the music in that atmosphere. It's all mm -hmm. Middle Eastern, so it's it's almost like I, you know, and I, it's, I'm, glad, I'm glad you asked me this because it almost goes without saying that I had the Middle Eastern influence because that's all I heard. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously that that came into the music, but at the same time, I, I I I was the youngest in my family, and so my brothers and sisters would be like the messengers and, and the deliverers of all the, of mm -hmm. all like the outside world to me. Mm -hmm. And so they were just rockers. They loved rock, pop, and it was just. And, and How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have two brothers, and one sister. You know, she was. You know, they were all quirky in their own ways. And so that's where I learned about all the you know different music out there, the rock musicians out mm -hmm. there, and you know the, um, the this big stage shows with the pyrotechnics and everything. And, mm -hmm. and then I'd go home and listen, you know, on the radio and TV, there was Middle Eastern music. So I'm like, oh wow, what's this? You know. Yeah. So it was just a mix. It was just a, it was a, a, br a hybrid of both the mm -hmm. education that I was getting. So where do you see yourself in the future? Like, do you are you planning on pursuing this? 
do you, I mean, obviously it seems like you've been, you are a musician, the way you talk about it, this is your thing. Yeah. So w you're obviously not going to give it up anytime soon, which yeah. is great. Like, I think that's fantastic. So, but where do you, where do you, do you ever th think about going solo or do you think about, you know, having another band or do you want to change genres, you want to explore something different, travel, I don't know, what's... Well, the plan is, I'm just going to keep doing what I've do, been doing. I mean, I've, um, it's not like I have to take a certain part of my life and sacrifice it to do music, right? Because I've been doing it, I've done everything in my life with music on the side. So music is almost like a, it's almost like a spiritual thing for me, it's mm -hmm. like, almost like a prayer. So um, I would go back and I would never give this up. I would always want to pursue this, um, whether it does something for me professionally or not. Um, I haven't really pursued it professionally mm -hmm. at this point. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's appreciated so far. As long as I just want my efforts to go appreciate it. As long as I see that happening, I'm very happy. And if even if not, I'm happy sitting in my room just kind of playing my guitar. Away. There you go. Now, one more question, like which involves. Ask away. Uh, okay. Ask away. <laughs> well, there's. Um, I know that since you've been in like mostly Muslim countries, there's been a lot of Muslim influence in your life, obviously. And um, sp as spirit spiritually speaking. How does that play in? Because there are people out there who say music is haram, you know, and music is not acceptable in Islam, for example. How does that, how do you deal with that, you know? I was, I was very traumatized I was, in terms of trauma in my life. That was one of the big traumas in my life. So, you know, after I did all this, this musical stuff and I love music and that was a big part of my life and then, you know, you go to Pakistan and it's like, no, it's, like, no, it's, no, it's wrong, it's not good. And, and and I was like, what? What are you talking about? How can it be wrong? This is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's brought so much good out of me. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I think I think that that statement in in the Quran and the religious texts is is kind of taken out of context to a certain extent. I've you know I've asked a bunch of like a lot of trusted scholars, relatives of mine. Mm -hmm. have, um, you know, they say that it's it's obviously it's good to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Islam itself has music, really, if you think about it. Azan, what is, what is that? It's a harmony, and mm -hmm. that it's a melody that really entices you and makes you think. It's a spiritual sort of a deep thing. Mm -hmm. Same with in, in Muharram, with the Shia Muslims. I mean, they, 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 they sing. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't deny it. They say, mm -hmm. they say they read, but really, you're singing. For 